welcome back to another YouTube video. I'm gonna sit down and talk to you about how we're adding window tinting as a new service, why you don't need the best tools or products, how to dramatically change your business, and why most detailers are gonna have a better mobile setup than we do. There's a bunch of information on this rather long YouTube video. And the way we're staying organized and efficient in our business is by using Jobber. Now, I've been using Jobber now for almost five years. We use it to schedule customers, keep track of customers' information, send automated appointment reminders, send outs on our way text messages, and a lot more. If you want to get a free 14-day trial plus a special discount, click the link down below to give it a try. So first question right here is how long have you been detailing or been in business? So that's going to be, I started back in 2011. Uh, so now that is 10 plus years, call it 12 years now. That's a pretty long time detailing cars and such. And like, it, it, you know, a lot of people like to see, and especially new people that run into Detail Groove, whether it's on Instagram, TikTok, or here on YouTube, and they see that there's like a shop or that we had or that we have a van or we sold it now, but we had a van, we have a shop or two shops. And it's like, uh, like that happened over like a long period of time. So don't think at all. It's like, I don't want ever anyone let to think that like, oh, like he's there because like he's so great. And what it's like, it's been over tw like 12 years now, right? Like slowly like uh, over time you make incremental progress and if you look over the span of 12 years like of course like you start you know moving into new phases or, or different levels in your business but 12 years now that's a pretty long time and of those 12 like 10 of those were mobile detailing you know so we're still relatively new to like shop if you compare it to like how long I've been detailing. So, uh, you know, and I tell Lex all the time, but man, we, we, still need, we still need to stay mobile. Like I still wanna be mobile just because like that's what I know and like I'm kind of attached to mobile detail. We, we haven't gone mobile, so it's not like we could go, but we will in the future. I know Lex is very uh, excited to do that, but we will go back to being mobile uh, even for a few, uh, a few appointments per month. Uh, next question right here is, uh, I have all the detailing equipment, but I can't get any customers. And let me tell you, buddy, that is a very frequent problem that detailers will face to where they, they, you know, it's easy to just go and look at a lot of YouTube videos or follow people on Instagram. And like, you look at the, at their Amazon list of like the tools and products that they have, or, you know, like you look at what the user and the details and you're like, oh, okay, let me add these to cart, right? Let me. Let me add the cleaners and the polishers and the extractor. And, you know, it's easy to go and find the tools and products that you need. And you can spend $500, $1,500, $3,500 on, on tools and equipment. But then, like, even if you get all of that, like, the biggest thing that will hold you back from making money and growing your business and quitting your job and getting a shop and whatever you want to do is, like, getting customers, getting strangers to hand over their hard-earned money for your services. So... The, like if you are not happy with where you are right now which most of us is going to be because we don't we have a lack of leads and customers you need to focus on customers and or, or generating customers and the interesting thing is that even if you're if you're making five thousand right now five thousand dollars a month and you want to make eight thousand you need to focus on generating more leads and customers and if you're barely getting started and you're making two hundred dollars a month then you need to focus on generating leads and customers to make more money. So whether it's someone at $500 a month or $50,000 a month, if you want to go to that next level, if you want to continue to grow, you need to get more leads and customers, right? So it's, it's the same problem, just at a different level. So if you're not, if you are starting your business and you're, and you're, and you're not making money, it's because you're not marketing. It's because you're not getting customers coming into your business on a daily basis. That will dramatically change how your business is ran and how you price your services and how your schedule looks. Is if you consistently, if you consistently get new leads coming into your business on a daily basis, how you look at your business, the money it makes will completely change. That's exactly what happened back in 2014, where from 2011 to 2014, I made no progress, had no customers, made little money. And then at 2015, once I actually focused on marketing and I ranked my website on the first page of Google, that's when the lead started like, it, I went from like not that busy to like extremely booked out. And you know, like the leads, the, the, the phone calls kept on coming in, the emails kept on coming in, my schedule was maxed out. And that's because once I focused fully, my efforts fully on marketing and I ranked my website on the first page of Google, this is called SEO, like, my business completely changed and you know looking at it now you know eight years later 
is our website is still producing results and it's still booking out our schedule because of the work i did back in 2015 we're still reaping the rewards to this day eight years later so next question here is from uh it's as far as pricing how much do you charge for a level one level two or level three paint correction so this is going to really differ based on a lot of things right my level one you know level one service is different from your level one or my level three is different from your level three so it's really hard to compare apples to apples because you know someone's service might include a wash or someone's service might include an engine cleaning and and, and we don't so it's very hard to say you know what we charge and, and and like what i'm saying is don't reflect what i say and what we do and what we charge based to, to your services because again not only just the service alone but like the area that you live in you know that's going to play a big role and and your 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 customers and your your quality like all that plays a role into like how much you charge so for us on this one it's a correction and coding i uh I, sh I can confirm in a bit but i think we're charging sixteen hundred dollars for the interior i mean sorry <laughs> sixteen hundred dollars for the correction and coding and then 280 dollars for the interior so that's around 18 1900 dollars now it was actually uh the interior was originally quoted between 300 to 350 um and we told the customer we'd give them a accurate price once we see it in person the interior wasn't bad at all like it, it legitimately like it, it did not need any thorough scrubbing like there wasn't like some like there were some areas that needed touch-ups but it wasn't bad so the original quote was 300 to 350 we dropped it down to 280 because it, it wasn't bad same thing with the exterior i think we quoted like 18 to 2200 i forget the quote the range but we ended up charging what did i, what did I just say 1600 dollars because it, it was in pretty good shape um and that's on the scv now you know we we also worked on a chevy sonic uh that one had a correction and coating and i think we charged 1200 dollars for that one right i mean it's way smaller than that one but the level of work that we did to, to that small sonic relative to how the size of this suv it was a lot more works and we, and we took a lot more time um well maybe the same no yeah it took a lot more time because it's so small but we did like multi-step um and we charged like 1200 for that 1300 for that so it's it's really hard to tell you like it's really hard to give you apple to apple comparison just because there's so many small little uh um, um criteria that uh, or caveats to happen with every service right like what's the condition of the vehicle the clear coat what what what's the budget of the customer um like all these things play into like how much you charge someone or like you know how long it takes so it's, it's really hard to give you like a accurate answer other than just saying what i charge but don't take my like uh, take everything with a big grain of salt because what we charge what we do is going to be completely different from you especially if you're in a different area the economics your your, your area just it's all going to be different so you know hopefully that helps uh next question here is thoughts on the trend of diamond plates in mobile vans uh so i've said this multiple times now most detailers are going to have a better setup like a mobile setup than we did right when i was in my matrix when i was in my hhr when we were in the ram pro master i spent no time making it look pretty or professional or, or like adding you know uh painting the shelves and adding diamond plating and adding like cool features to it like it was none of that it was literally just we bought it we moved something we moved the equipment over we had someone build out the shelves for us we clamped everything down and then like after that i mean we didn't do anything there was no diamond plating nothing was painted in the interior there was like we just had some old wooden uh, uh table thing that was holding up the air the, the the air hose reel um so as far as a trend when, i don't think that's a trend right now that's like a pretty standard thing to have or not standard but i i've seen diamond plating in vans f for a while now but she was like well too was like if if you're trying to save up to go buy a van or like you're waiting to get a van in order to be mobile like stop like if you have a a, a wrx if you have a, a a charger if you have a 350z if you have a tacoma like go start with that you don't need to wait to go in and, and save up this many checks or go get a loan to go get like you don't need any of that like, you can start with what you have i started out of my 2003 toyota matrix xrs when angel goes mobile he is out of a what truck is it ram 1500 um when lex was going mobile it was out of a 1999 dodge caravan um you know so like don't like i, I would not 
if it's the difference between like, would you rather wait lo longer or go get a loan or save up your money to go get a van or just go get started right now to go make money? I mean, 10 out of 10 times, start right now to go make money. Um, but that being said, like if you're, trying to, if you're trying to build out your mobile setup and you're trying to budget in diamond plating and like you're stretching it a bit more, like I, I wouldn't even care about that. Like that's what I'm saying. Most people are gonna have better mobile setups than we did because I did not put any thought into like, oh, we gotta make it look professional. Like the, the van was never wrapped. Um, and the reason why I never wrapped it is because so many people I would see in the comment section talk about like how, I, how you have to wrap your van. It's gonna be a, a, a rolling billboard. And I, I, again, like to me, I was like, well, let me just let, let me see if that's true or not so like can we still grow the business without getting it wrapped and like again like the hhr was wrapped for a, a moment uh for like maybe two a year or two years um and then i i, I took it off because it was like uh like peeling and cracking and such but yeah we never wrapped our van either like we had a little decal on the side for like the last eight months that we had it but after that like we we didn't wrap it at all Again, not, not to say you shouldn't put time and effort. And like, like if, that, if, if, you know, you're going to be in your mobile van most of the time, you want to feel like, you know, you want to feel good in it. You want to be proud of it. So I'm not saying don't do it. But if you're like on a tight budget and like you're waiting a little more to get these diamond plates, it's like, why? Stop that. Like, go make money and go install it afterwards. Or, you know, like don't make that like a priority if you're not in the means to do that is what I'm saying. Like the number one thing here is start your business, go get customers and make money. Right, everything re revolves around that. Like we've never had a customer say like, "Oh man, you guys have diamond plating." Like I definitely want to book with you. Like that, that's never been a thing. Like it's 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 never happened. May we've maybe had like less than a handful of times a customer look in our van, you know. So I don't just don't have any of these these, these pre uh, preconceived notions of like what your van should be. Instead, like go out and take action and then, like go get tangible results meaning go actually make money and you know once you start having that uh, once you start getting revenue in then you can have a bit more you know flexibility of what you do with it again going back to the earlier point of like once you get your your, your schedule booked out and you're making money and you have a consistent flow of revenue it's like okay that's when things change that's when that's when you're able to actually do things when you're just trying to get started when you're saving the money you can to go and get tools or you're just getting started like you don't have much wiggle room unless you have a budget to start off with right like you know, you have a full-time job and you set aside, you know, $5,000, sure. But even then, like, you want to make that $5,000 last and stretch it as long as, as far as you can. And, you know, if it's between spending $1,000 or $500 on, on diamond plating or $500 on a nicer extractor, well, then you go, you know, you go with the nicer extractor, not the diamond plating, because, you know, on the short term, you don't really get much from the diamond plating. So long story short, my thoughts on the diamond plating it's nice to have if it's in your means if it's not don't even worry about it but that's going to be kind of like with anything so next question right here is what is the best air compressor so taking a step back is I, I i stay away from the word what's the best because there is no best in terms of like what's the one that rules it all right because like if i'm looking to my left over here we have the big boy blower pro which is a blower, right? It's stationary, the hose extends basically to the other side of the shop. Then on the other side over here is we have the Ego 650 blower, I forget the number, but the Ego 650 blower, cordless, right? They both do great. They're both best in their own lane, in their own category, right? There's pros and cons to the Ego cordless, right? One, it's cordless, so there's no cables, you can just pick it up and, 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 and use it where it need to be. The, the con to that is we'll make sure the batteries stay charged. If one battery dies, which it did, we have one, we had two batteries, one died, like it, it, no, it no longer works. Well, the batteries itself, just the battery is like 150, $175, right? So for one price of, the, of a battery, you're basically buying another blower, right? So that's expensive. And then with the, with the big boy blower, it's like, it's great. It always stays hooked up, like it, it doesn't die. But you know, there is a limit to like how far we can take it. It is a, a, li a little more bulkier, so kind of like it's kind of a bit more awkward. Um, if you keep it on long enough, it does trip the circuit. Um, like if you keep it on that long, it will trip the circuit. Uh, so again, not not that as bad, but more so like there, there are nuances to each one. So I never look at anything of like what is the best because if you're looking for the best, I mean, what like is the best just uh, the most expensive thing out there? Because even that doesn't mean it's the best, right? It's just the most expensive. So instead, like 
what's the best thing that you can buy within the budget that you're allowed? Meaning if you, like, if you want to buy air compressor and you have a budget of $250, you're probably best to go with the rigid, um, the rigid, the, the, the very popular rigid air compressor, the one that we have in our van, like everyone has that one for mobile detailers. I think that's a, I forgot how much it is. But let's say it's like within the budget, you purchase that one. Or if you have a $150 budget, maybe you get the, the Craftsman Pancake one, right? Not that it's, it, it, it's low uh, a tank, it, it, it always turns on because it has to, 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 to refill. But like if that's the best that you can purchase within the budget that you have, get that one. Um, so we've gone through four air compressors. We've had the rigid one for the mobile van. We have a California Air Tools compressor. We've had a DeWalt. We have a, uh, what is the other one, Husky. Ranging from however much the air compressor to, I think like five, six hundred bucks on, on the other one. Um, but again, like I, I don't look at what, what's the best. So like, okay, like if we want to buy one locally, right? I'm not going to go and do a day of or, or, or an hour or a couple hours of research on what's the best compressor and what I need. It's like, okay, what, what's the bare minimum that we need? And here available locally, what, what, what can I purchase? Is it at Home Depot? Lowe's? Okay, let's go to Lowe's. Okay, let, let's look around. Okay, like this is the best one, just purchase it. Like, you know, we don't need to go and like spend so much time trying to figure things out. Like you need to take action, you know? So it's like, I, I never look for the best, just what's, what's the best that you can purchase within the budget that you, that you have. And again, over time, you can upgrade things, right? Like was, the, was my matrix the best thing to have for mobile detailing? No, and then I upgraded to a, two, a 2009 HHR panel. Was it the best? No, but it was better. And then you have the uh, 2015 Grand Promaster. Was that the best? It depends because, you know, you, with that one, there was a lot of space, but guess what? Now you can't go into garages because the clearance, the height clearance doesn't fit. Um, if you had a Ford Transit, it's like, okay, you can go into uh, parking garages, but now you can't fit as much as you do here, right? So there's pros and cons to each one. So don't look at what's the best, just what's the best that you can afford in the budget that you're allowed. And that's literally it. Like don't overthink anything. You, Even if you do hours or days of research, you're still gonna make some bad decisions and you're still gonna make some, some, you're still gonna purchase some items that you don't end up using or, or you don't use as much as you think you are. So it's like, don't overstress these things. Like it, it's, you know, it's just, it's not a big deal. I, I don't want people to think like it, it's, it's that big of a deal to where it needs to hinder your progress or hinder your results. Like, like if you, uh, right now we have the, uh, the PE 500 right here to my, to, to your right. That's a $3,000 machine, uh, five gallon capacity tank. It has a two stage motor. It, has, it requires two cords to run. Fantastic machine. If you gave me an Aqua Provac, that's $475, non-heated, like 1.3 gallon capacity, we'd still get the car done, right? It'd take us a lot longer, right? We'd have to do more multiple passes. We'd have to stop a lot more, but we could still get the, the same job done with a $475 extractor versus a $3,000 extractor with a $600 uh, uh, upholstery want, right? So it's like, and again, I, I went like three years, four years with the Aqua Provac, doing a bunch of interiors on a daily basis, doing two, three interiors a day with the Aqua Provac. So it's like, it, it's, don't look for the best, just what's the best that you can purchase from the budget that you're allowed, that, that you have, and then how can you capitalize and maximize that tool to, 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 to get the best efficiency out of it, you know? Like if I gave most of you guys that $3,000 PE 500, it would like, you would have to rethink your entire mobile detailing setup because like that's a big extractor. So it takes up a lot of space in the van, right? Not only that, but you, if you want to use it to its full, full capacity or full, to its full potential, you need to have a bigger, a big enough generator to run that thing. Again, it takes two cords and it's two cords, one for the heater, one for the vacuum. So then you need a bigger generator to run that thing. And guess what? Now, instead of that little 2,000, 3,500, generator that you have you need to get one that's even bigger than that one so now you have a bigger a bigger extractor a bigger generator and now in, in your ford transit half the uh, half the maybe not half but like a quarter of the or one third of the of the van now goes to just uh, uh, holding two things right and you don't want to bring this extractor up and down out of the van because it's heavy right because if you um because it's, you know, well, it's five, it's five gallons plus the extractor itself is pretty big. So you want to keep it mounted in your van, which means what? Now you need a hose reel, right? Get 30 feet on there. Now mount. So literally half the van will go to the extractor, the generator and the hose reel. Is your setup like, are you just because you can get a better tool does not mean that you are now better, right? Because then it's a, it's a, it's a ripple effect to now say, oh, well, 
yeah, we have the big extractor, but oh, now we need a bigger generator. Oh, but now we need a more uh, a bigger reel. Oh, now we need to move some things around. Like it's a cascading effect. So don't look for the, don't look for the best. Get whatever you can, and get the most out of that. Long answer on that one. My bad. It feels great today. Uh, like uh, being out here making this video is like very, 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 uh, very pleasing. I'm not really, it's one of those things where like, you know, you go through the winter season and like, okay, like, you know, it's cool. Can't wait for the heat. And then when the heat gets you're like, oh, okay, can't wait for the, for the winter time. But for sure this, uh, oh, we're sending Angel, I'll actually, you know, uh, I'll skip a question here is we're sending uh, Angel out to, uh, for window tinning training tomorrow, actually Thursday. Um, so that's something that we're really excited about. Looking back at it now is we did a vinyl wrap, PPF, now tint. If we could do it, if we could do it all over, we should have done tint, vinyl, PPF. Reason being is, so like the, the way we offered smoke odor removal is that we kept on getting asked from customers, hey, do you do smoke odor? And we kept on saying no, like we, we don't offer that service. We don't have anyone that we can recommend you because we just, there's, I don't know of any details that do that. And after turning them down so many times, Lex and I were like, hmm, maybe we should like go get trained and like learn what to do. So we, we uh, Lex went through a IICRC uh, class for a smoke odor removal. Um, and it's for us uh, uh, treating uh, smoke odor houses. And we just applied it to, to, to detailing. And uh, that took like maybe like three weeks or like a month from like, like looking at where to take the class, taking it online and then like ordering the equipment and all that stuff. Um, so uh, the first customer that we booked, it was $700. And then the next one that we booked, it was $500. And the next one we booked, it was 500 and then 800 and 1400 and 600. So it's like, we kept on getting asked, Hey, do you do the service? We kept on saying no. And then we were like, Hey, instead of saying no, how about we offer the service? So we offered that service. The same thing has been happening with tint. We're like four years now, we've been getting tint requests. Hey, do you do tint? Do you do tint? Do you do tint? And we keep on saying no. And Angel was interested in vinyl. So we're like, oh, let's do vinyl wraps. But no one ever asked for vinyl wrap. Like we've never been asked, hey, do you do vinyl wrapping at your detail bit? Like we've never been asked that, but we've been asked, do you do tint services? And tint is probably more closely aligned to detailing than the vinyl is to detailing so you know in retrospect you know we would probably flip that around and we, we and, and tint's probably you know i don't want to step on any toes but i think tint's probably the easier one like the good thing that we did vinyl ppf and then now tint is that angel has gone through the learning curve of film of cutting of stretching of glassing out to where and you know we've done ppf installations so now when it comes to the like you know glass is basically it's for the most part always flat um if you have to disassemble anything well we've already done disassemblies with the vinyl wraps um so now at that point it's like okay it's like it, it should be the easiest one because we've already gone through full vinyl wraps ppf installations working with with different films of vinyl so we're assuming like okay tint should be the easiest to get up because all that angel has the most experience he can come back and train us because for sure lex is also going to pick up is going to learn that skill as well because angel can be doing vinyl rep and tint so lex will also become very fluent in uh and and tinting as well um so that's tomorrow the the training is thursday friday saturday uh it's with a local it, they're not a local company as far as they only work locally um but we do have um they are located here in houston as far as like we can go purchase the studums locally which helps like instead of having to place an order and like hey yeah they'll ship out tomorrow and and get to you in two days it's like oh they're just you know 40 minutes away we can, you know, if we're low on inventory for this one day, whatever, like we can just drive and go, go pick it up and, and bring it back. Same thing with uh, Fellers. They actually have a distribution center here as well. It's a little out of the way, but like on a pinch, like, oh, the customer last minute, like he changed the, the wrap and he actually wants a gloss black on the, fr on, on the top or the roof. Like, let, let's just go, you know, pick it up locally because it's there. Um, but other than that, we're always ordering film. Like that, that's what we want. We don't want to, we don't want to have to keep on driving last minute. But if a last minute thing comes up, it, it definitely helps that. We can call, hey, can I get, you know, 100 feet of whatever, whatever. Oh, sure, pick it up at, in, in an hour. Okay, cool. You know, that's that's pretty, pretty good and kind of relieves some stress from us if we do get caught in a pinch. So I don't know how long this video has been, but I feel like it's been 
going for a while let me know what you're interested in learning if you have any questions your thoughts about anything if you want to check out proper care that is a product line that i created for both enthusiasts and professionals right now we have an all-purpose cleaner a plastic and rubber dressing a window cleaner and a car soap you can go to propercareusa.com i'll talk to you guys on the next one